lethal injection was proposed on January 17, 1888, by Julius Mount Blyer, a New York doctor who praised it as being cheaper than hanging. Lethal injection gained popularity in the late 20th century as a form of execution intended to supplant other methods, notably electrocution, gas inhalation, hanging and firing squad, that were considered to be less humane. It is now the most common form of legal execution in the United States. Blyer's idea was never used due to a series of botched executions and the eventual rise of public disapproval in electrocutions. Lethal injections were first used by Nazi Germany to execute prisoners during World War II. During the war, lethal injections were also administered to children detained at the Sissett concentration camp by the camp's commander. The British Royal Commission on Capital Punishment 1949-1953 also considered lethal injection, but eventually ruled it out after pressure from the British Medical Association. In the United States, the typical lethal injection begins with the condemned person being strapped onto a gurney. Two intravenous canulas are then inserted, one in each arm. Only one is necessary to carry out the execution. The other is reserved as a backup in the event the primary line fails. A line leading from the IV line in an adjacent room is attached to the prisoner's IV and secured so that the line does not snap during the injections. The arm of the condemned person is swabbed with alcohol before the cannula is inserted. The needles and equipment used are sterilized. Questions have been raised about why these precautions against infection are performed despite the purpose of the injection being death. The several explanations include, canelli are sterilized and have their quality heavily controlled during manufacture, so using sterile ones is a routine medical procedure. Secondly. The prisoner could receive a stay of execution after the canelli have been inserted, as happened in the case of James Autry in October 1983. Third, use of unsterilized equipment would be a hazard to the prison personnel in case of an accidental needle stick. Following connection of the lines, saline drips are started in both arms. This, too is standard medical procedure. It must be ascertained that the IV lines are not blocked, ensuring the chemicals have not precipitated in the IV lines and blocked the needle, preventing the drugs from reaching the subject. A heart monitor is attached to the inmate. In most states, the intravenous injection is a series of drugs given in a set sequence designed to first induce unconsciousness followed by death through paralysis of respiratory muscles and or by cardiac arrest through depolarization of cardiac muscle cells. The execution of the condemned in most states involves three separate injections. Sodium theopental or pentobarbital, ultra-short action barbiturate an anesthetic agent used at a high dose that renders the person unconscious in less than 30 seconds. Depression of respiratory activity is one of the characteristic actions of this drug. Consequently, the lethal injection doses, as described in the sodium theopental, will even in the absence of the following two drugs, cause death due to lack of breathing as happens with overdoses of opioids. Pancuronium bromide, non-depolarizing muscle relaxant, which causes complete, fast, and sustained paralysis of the striated skeletal muscles, including the diaphragm and the rest of the respiratory muscles. 
This would eventually cause death by asphyxiation. Potassium chloride, a potassium salt, which increases the blood and cardiac concentration of potassium to stop the heart via an abnormal heartbeat and thus cause death by cardiac arrest. The drugs are not mixed externally to avoid precipitation. A sequential injection is also key to achieve the desired effects in the appropriate order. Administration of the pentobarbital renders the person unconscious. The infusion of the pancuronium bromide induces complete paralysis, including that of the lungs and diaphragm rendering the person unable to breathe. If the person being executed were not already completely unconscious, the injection of a highly concentrated solution of potassium chloride could cause severe pain at the site of the IV line, as well as along the punctured vein. It interrupts the electrical activity of the heart muscle and causes it to stop beating, bringing about the death of the person being executed. Death is pronounced after cardiac activity stops. Death usually occurs within seven minutes, although, due to complications in finding a suitable vein, the whole procedure can take up to two hours. As was the case with the execution of Christopher Newton on May 24, 2007. According to state law, if a physician's participation in the execution is prohibited for reasons of medical ethics, then the death ruling can be made by the state medical examiner's office. After confirmation that death has occurred, a coroner signs the condemned death certificate. This was not the case for Joe Nathan James Jr. Joe Nathan James had the longest botched lethal injection execution in history in the United States. Joe Nathan James was convicted and sentenced to death for the 1994 shooting death of Faith Hall. The victim was the ex-girlfriend of Joe Nathan James. According to prosecutors, James briefly dated Hall and became obsessed with her after she rejected him. Court documents say he forced his way inside Hall's friend's apartment in Birmingham pulled a gun and shot all three times on August 15, 1994, after stalking and harassing her for months. James was convicted of capital murder in 1996 by a jury that voted to recommend the death penalty, which a judge imposed. However, that conviction was overturned when a state appeals court ruled that the judge had wrongly admitted some police reports into evidence. After another trial, James was again sentenced to death in 1999. His latest appeal with the U.S. Supreme Court was filed by a lawyer on his behalf arguing that Alabama didn't give inmates sufficient notice of their right to select an alternate execution method. He was seeking to die by nitrogen hypoxia, an approved but untried method of execution in Alabama. The state hasn't developed a protocol for using nitrogen to carry out executions. Alabama's execution of Joe Nathan James Jr on July 28, 2022, may have taken longer than any other lethal injection in recorded American history. And no death penalty ever administered in the U.S. may have taken quite as long, according to an analysis by a human rights organization. An examination by Reprieve U.S. of James's execution estimates that it took Alabama officials between three and three and a half hours to carry out the lethal injection, a duration that the organization argues violates constitutional protections against inhumane punishments. James was supposed to be put to death at 6 p.m. on July 28, 2022, 
but it wasn't until about 9 p.m. that media witnesses were allowed to enter the execution chamber. Then, it wasn't until 9.27 p.m. that officials pronounced him dead. State officials insisted in a statement that there was nothing out of the ordinary, despite facing questions about the lengthy delay. But later, they modified their statement to say James's executioners had experienced trouble establishing the intravenous lines carrying the lethal drugs. Citing evidence from James's autopsy as well as sources quoted in a recent report from The Atlantic on his death, Reprieve US maintains that it is clear the lethal injection began long before the media witnesses were admitted into the execution chamber. The organization said James's execution team unsuccessfully tried for three hours or more to insert an IV line before attempting a cut-down procedure. That may have caused the condemned man to struggle, leaving him with injuries on his hands and wrists. Officials then reportedly sedated James, which may have explained why he never opened his eyes or moved while on a gurney after the media witnesses were admitted into the execution chamber. He also never spoke when asked if he had any last words. Some people argued that James essentially underwent two executions, saying, first, a tortuous procedure behind closed doors, then a theatrical performance for witnesses. Joe Nathan James was 50 years old at the time of his execution. Thank you for watching Death Row.